another episode of Presence Practice with Poonam and Parker. My name is Parker, and hello, Poonam. How are you today? I'm good, thank you, Parker. How are you? Very good, thank you. So today's topic is living in harmony with the way things are. And the Zen proverb, the snow falls each flake in its appropriate place. So everything is as it should be and nothing is out of order. And I just want to hold this as a reminder uh, that there's always going to be a new set of circumstances that are unresolved, maybe a new challenge that comes to us that we don't feel like we have all everything we need to figure it out, right? That it, it or that there's some uh, condition that's come to us that we can see no light at the other end of it. We have are suddenly have a medical condition where we can't walk anymore or that we're homebound or that our life is limited. We have a certain amount of time to live. Say there, there could be many stories. My children are young. These are facts of the situation and we can stick with those and hold the tenderness and the clinging or the, the, the grief or what, what, whatever comes up around these circumstances, but not also fight the circumstances. So we're not trying to varnish the facts of a situation or what is, but it's about deep acceptance, deeply allowing, deeply recognizing that we don't know and that we never have and that we won't, that we don't know what a situation means or where it's going, right? So everything as it should be, the snow falls, each flake in its appropriate place. It, nothing could be otherwise than how it is right now. You can begin at any time to pull your attention back from any identification with stories, with feelings of unfairness, regret, guilt. What should be, we pull all of that attention back and we put it inside of our body into the simplicity of this moment and the stillness of this moment. So you don't have, so by accepting the facts of the situation and the not and the story would be there, let's for instance, might be that someone has illness in them. Right now there is a disease in my body. The story is the doctor says you may die. We don't know what the next chapter or the next moment it, it could be you could get in a car accident and then the next hour and be dead so here we are together and we're going to accept what is whatever challenge whatever this chapter in our book is right now we could probably narrow it down to a few bullet pointed facts and reduce that chapter into just the facts of a situation. And then whatever we do next, that we just do whatever naturally comes next, whatever comes out of that still spaciousness. Then you sit in the eternal you that's never been disconnected from source. And that is living in harmony with the way things are. And there's peacefulness in, in, in our hearts. 
we don't expect something to change. We don't want it to be different. We can have preferences. I like preferences because they're loose. They're not beliefs or something we identify with. So whatever your challenges are right now, what if I were to say that it's not that big a deal and that this too shall pass? And that you may be experiencing a pause between challenges. How many times have you experienced a pause and challenges and everything's going well and we're like, yay, everything's going so great in my life now. But in the late night hours when we lie in bed, we're wondering how long it will last. <laughs> and dread comes over us. So we're reacting to some projection in the future. And what we were doing here is we're going to draw you, want to draw you back from that insanity into the peaceful stillness, that peaceful stillness of awareness. Just the present moment right now. Poonam, would you like to add anything to this? There are various things that can stem from uh, just when we observe what is arising in the present moment. Um, we can go into a state of resistance and say, no, this should not be the way it is. And that resistance can cause more of the same thing happening over and over again. We don't realize as humans that the challenge was offered to move us into a state of surrender. The one thing that I have learned from uh, chapter 10 of The Power of Now the meaning of surrender, right? Um, that every experience, <clears throat> experience is given to us to move us into surrender. So we may look at an event out there and say, why is that happening to that person? That person is such a sweet person. Why is this um, terminal illness happening to this person? But we know at the uh, very core of why it is happening is because they need to move into a state of surrender, have that spiritual energy of surrender arise so that they can make a shift in their consciousness. To deepen our consciousness, yes. Right? So there is a purpose. So the resistance is arising in us to say, no, that should not be happening. And that is what I think we need to know that, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, that the resistance shouldn't arise. Well, if the re resistance does arise, let's, let's meet ourselves exactly where we're at. So if there's resistance, if we sense that it's happening in us, uh, lecture, I shouldn't be having resistance in me right now. It's, it's wrong. Let me, what else can I do? Uh, well, what else can we do is we uh, just see it. See where the resistance is showing up in our body put our total attention there, and then be quiet. Pronum and I cannot talk up to you about what we'll fi you'll find in that silent space. Maybe there are patterns that, that, uh, uh, that keep coming back. So what you're talking about, Poonam, are patterns. Maybe there are some things that need to be some kind of clinging, some kind of craving that needs to be, uh, uh, that, that uh, recognize that needs to be seen uh, so we have patterns that we all share but uh, they come with different frequency or, or a different pattern or diff by pattern I mean a different maybe uh, feel for each one of us so somebody might have uh, a heavy pattern of um, 
complaining, which would be everything uh, is not as it should be, and it should be otherwise, or I know better. So that might be a pattern about feeling inferior, superior to a person or situation. So there's, there's so many different uh, thing, th things that could be happening uh, for each individual uh, uh, when, when there's resistance or rejecting of the present moment. Uh, the path is to turn and face it. Uh, to not, we're going to choose not to sweep it under the rug, not to let it layer anymore. And now we're ready to look at it. And let's say someone's not looking at it. Well, maybe it's not time to look at it. Everybody do as you do. When it's time, then it then it will come. Uh, but uh, if if uh, uh, if we want to move to the the whole purpose of this particular episode. It's to say that nothing is out of order, that, that it could not be otherwise than how it is and how it will be. And can we just show up and be present for it and not run from it? And the looking, um, we cannot look just by saying, I'm going, to, I'm going to look at my resistance, right? To accept what is as it is, how it should be. Um, we have to have enough presence power. Like we, we have, um, there should be enough presence practice in that human's life to know of their own awareness, right? Can I examine my, um, whatever is arising in my present moment? What is the resistance? All that discernment, that, that ability to, uh, discern is not going to be, uh, you know, it's not colloquial. Okay, now you observe your reactions or now you observe your resistance. That's not going to be like mind energy observing resistance, right? It has to be, you, you have to rest in your awareness. Makes or sense. not, or not. So if we're unconscious, that's as it should be too. So we accept everything exactly as it is. We allow life to unfold. We, so for many people, they have a, there's a, an awakening, but it's sort of like unconsciousness, consciousness, unconsciousness, un that is as it should be. It takes a certain amount of loving kindness to allow, to allow that to happen and grace to come in and helps break up that, uh, what, what Eckhart calls the shell of the ego. Uh, so uh, what is could be this right here. And we don't really need, there's no have to do anything. There's no requirement. Nothing is the most important thing. The most important thing is to just allow things to be as they are, to recognize when we've gone unconscious again, and then bring ourselves back into that deep spaciousness. So, and as we peel apart these uh, patterns, accessing the present moment becomes much easier because then, then uh, something you said the other day, Poonam, was uh, uh, cease cherishing opinions. When you drop these opinions, when we drop beliefs, away when we stop fighting what is then uh, it, accessing the present moment becomes uh, uh, very easy that's why oftentimes if someone gets a, sen a sentence where they know how much time they have left to live they drop immediately and spontaneously into the present moment and so it's really dying before we die so we die each moment so we'd have no idea what the next words out of Parker's mouth will be right now. And we can sense the space between words. And then, and then we just allow life to unfold. We get out of the way. <laughs> Thank you, Poonam. Thank you, Parker.